Hello everyone and welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host Harrison Scullin and today I'll be discussing Meet John Doe from 1941 starring Barbara Stanwyck and Gary Cooper. And so let me share some essential details about the film. So this is from its IMDb page. Frank Capra, the director of this film, he didn't want anyone to play John Doe except Gary Cooper who agreed to the part without reading a script for two reasons. One, he had enjoyed working with Capra on Mr. Deeds Goes to Town in 1936, and also he wanted to work with Barbara Stanwyck. And as I move on with this, we'll kind of discuss kind of the results of that. And so now starting out with the plot, I gave it a three out of five. Um, I love, let me share my thoughts as to why. I love the premise of this film, and I love the story of a guy going from, you know, rags to riches. He starts out as a homeless guy and then he ends up being the potential president of the United States. Like, that's pretty cool how that happened, right? And I also love the political drama that surround the movement and all the things he's trying to do and trying to get people on board and some of the corruption between the big business and the politicians. I love that. It's really, really good. But to me, I don't love how abruptly the film ends. I don't like how it's resolved. I think it's way too rushed. I think we don't see really any results that I was kind of hoping for. I'd kind of hope, you know, maybe seeing some people go behind the bars. Nothing really like that happens. It kind of just ends, which I get. At the end of the film, the whole premise is making sure John Doe finally finds love, right? And also Barbara Stanwyck's character. But to me, it's just sad, you know, that we could have seen some justice, right? But we didn't really get that. So I was a little disappointed with that. Another reason, there's this monologue scene with, I want to say he's like a soda stream guy or soda fountain guy, rather. And it's a great scene. He has this great monologue, but it goes on for like seven minutes and he just keeps adding on and on and on and on to it. I think it would have been perfect if it was like three or four minutes long. It's a good, I think it's almost 10 minutes long, honestly. It's a very, very long scene. Now, that doesn't sound very long, but in movie world, that is very, very long. So I think that could have been trimmed down and made really, really nice and really to the point. I think it kind of dragged on for a little too bit. Dragged on for a little too long. So, but those are my thoughts on the plot. Now let's talk about the acting, though. I give it a 5 out of 5. I think Gary Cooper and Barbara Stanwyck have amazing chemistry together in this film. They really mesh well together. I love their character arcs, especially Gary Cooper's, you know. He starts out as a homeless guy with, like, down on his luck and then he ends up being this like political figure and all that and then at the end he ends up being just a really good guy right i love that i also like barbara stanwicks now i didn't like how the film ended but i like where his arc ended if that makes sense barbara stanwick same thing you know she starts out she gets fired from her job and then she finds a way to get it back again and i love that she's great in this role i love it when she does roles like this i think she's always hilarious and great so yeah, I loved it. And then I also love the the Colonel, quote unquote, Colonel character. He's played by James Gleason. I thought he was hilarious. He was a great comic relief. And he's not like, you know, slapstick funny. He's very dry and very, uh, he's a stickler, but he's hilarious, if that makes sense. So I loved him. But yeah, the acting was incredible all around. Okay, in regards to directing, gave it a four and a half out of five. I really liked it. Um, you know, I think, like I was saying, some of those scenes could have been trimmed down. Now, I love Frank Capra's films. He's very uh, politically motivated, very you know, patriotic and whatnot. But I do think that scene I was mentioning earlier really could have been trimmed down because he just really wanted to make the point that the townspeople are who are important, right? They're the ones that we should be focusing on, especially our candidates, right? But I, I really think it could have been trimmed down just a little bit more. And apparently, speaking about the ending, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of. There were four different versions filmed before this fifth one was chosen. And the reason why they chose it was, I guess, a letter from an audience member suggested it. And Frank Capra actually liked it because the four other ones he did not like. I don't know what they happened in them. I'd love to see what occurred in those four other endings, but... I think they would have been better. I don't know. I, I wasn't a huge fan of this. Which to me kind of shows, I don't know if they really knew how to end the movie. I don't really blame him either. I mean, you know, he's out of the race, right? 
So how do you end it? Now they end different than how it started. I don't know. I, I, I really wish there was a different ending. All right. Now talking about cinematography and special effects, I gave it a five out of five. I thought it was amazing. I love the scenes whenever John Doe is giving a speech, whether that's his first time, you know, on the radio, that's a great scene and really well staged and whatnot. I love the scene where they're outside and it's raining and he's talking about how he kind of lied to the people and how they're being tricked and whatnot. I love that scene, like all around. It's a beautifully shot film. Once again, Frank Capra, man, he knew how to do montages. He knew how to film scenes. I love it. It's a really, really good movie in that aspect. It's really, really well put together. I, I love it. All right. Girls and Music gave it a five out of five as well. I loved it. There's this ending music where he's on the roof with Barbara Stanwyck. I really, really liked. And I don't like how abruptly it ends, but I do like that music. It's really good. Whenever he's giving speeches, they kind of have some kind of patriotic music. I love that. The montages always have great patriotic music too. I'm always a sucker for that. No, it was great. I loved it. All right, so tallying that all up, that brings my letterbox score to four and a half out of five. And so would I recommend this movie? Absolutely, yes, I would. You know, I think it's just as relevant of a film today as it was when it was released. You know, I I know for sure there's still corruption going on between big corporations and politicians. I know that there's movements on both sides. Republicans and Democrats are both guilty of it, of leading people astray and taking all their money and whatnot, not really caring about the public's interests. It's happening all the time. So I definitely think it's just as relevant today as it was when it came out. So for that alone, I highly recommend this movie. I think everybody should watch it because it helps you kind of understand a little bit of what is going on in reality. I mean, and how it's kind of always been going on a little bit, right? There's always been some correlation in that way. So yeah, I loved it. I It's one of my favorite Frank Capra films. All right, those are my thoughts on Meet John Doe from 1941. Thank you so much for watching and listening to today's episode. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies, where I discuss details about the week's particular film. New podcast episodes are released Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. And video versions of podcasts are released Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube and Rumble. All right, thank you so much. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care. Thank you.